Yo, what's good? It's Juco. I'm here at the Hitmakers Week Camp Beatstars in Sony from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. I've been producing for about four years. The main thing that got me into producing is I started off, I downloaded FL Studio one day and I started off by rapping. I was kind of inspired by like Juice World, Pierre Bourne, his beats at the time, Playboy Cardi back in like uh, 2020. So I kind of just started rapping for fun and then at some point I just decided one day to start making beats. So that's when I started making beats back in 2020 on FL Studio. Well, I think what, like the, the main thing that made me like inspired to make music was watching a lot of like, like I would watch a lot of producer like uh, live streams like Internet Money, Nick Mira, Pario, like those are some producers I would watch a lot of videos about. And just seeing like Lil, like, because uh, around that time it was like Lil Tecca was doing really big, Juice Roll, like I said. Pierre Bourne's beats were like doing really crazy. So that was kind of like what inspired me. Like watching a lot of cook up videos and like producer vlogs from like internet money, especially it was like what got me into it. Yeah, so I've had a ton of like uh, through BeatStars, like I have a lot of, there's a ton of like beats I've put on uh, BeatStars my page. I've done sound kits before I was really doing my loops and beats. I would do a lot of loop kits through BeatStars and that's how I built my brand originally. Then um, free loop kits and paid kits and services too with BeatStars. And then I have tons of like collaborators I work with with a lot of my loops that I send out. And we do, a, like I do a ton of like stuff with like a bunch of like the big tight beat producers. I don't make tight beats myself, but I do a lot of like collab beats on BeatStars with all the guys. And I've had a, endless songs, songs on the way, like um, big songs on the way through BeatStars, through a YouTube type beat, all through BeatStars. So I'm getting a lot of songs through it. Definitely like the first thing to do if you're just trying to get into music and like start working on like working with other people on BeatStars, selling your beats or doing the loop route, whatever you want to do. Like first just take time and before you even worry about any of that, make sure your music is like really good. Like once your music is really good, everything kind of just is like easy because your music's good. So like you can do everything else. But yeah, once your music's good, I would say just like the way it worked for me is I just hustled. So I would just network, reach out to as many producers as I could, try to offer something different than most producers. You know, not take anything personal when you're reaching out to people. It's all business. So if somebody doesn't respond or whatever, you just move on. Like it's all business. But when you do get that respond back, you know, like value all those relationships you start getting and like listen to them, whatever they want, send them what they want. You know what I mean? And like really value like the first relationships you build with the producers. And then as far as beat stars, I would say, I mean, for me, like all I've, all I really did was from uh, my experience is I just reached out to a bunch of producers and use your, you need to, uh, I think a lot of producers need to post content, like post more stuff of them, especially Instagram reels. It's like a really good strategy of building your brand, but you need to post everything you can. You need to make sure your page is like, actually has stuff of you, not just like a MP3, like screen recordings of beats, show you cooking up, have pictures of you, have all your placements, small or big, everything, post everything. So then when somebody, when you do reach out to somebody, the first thing they're gonna do is click on your page. So you need to showcase all of that. But yeah, that's what I would say. Yeah, so my first major uh, placement was with Roddy Rich and Future. It was on the Live Life Fast album by Roddy Rich. Uh, the song's called All Good. Um, the way it came about is it was really just a loop I made probably like back in 2021, I think. And I was just, it's just an, it was just a, a simple loop. I ended up texting over to um, a producer named Roddy J who's done a lot of big records. And yeah, I just texted him one of that, uh, that loop in like a pack. And then I just ended up finding out actually like the day it dropped. So I was actually in a junior in high school and I was getting ready to go to sleep literally uh, to take my midterm, like my last midterm. And then before I went to sleep, I went to go on YouTube. I went to Roddy Rich's page real quick. The first one I clicked happened to be my loop. And then I was just like, it was just a crazy moment because it was like my first major record. But that's kind of how it came about. When, like at first I feel like they were kind of like curious because they my parents aren't really too familiar with like the whole music industry so they were kind of just like oh like are you gonna get your credit like how are you gonna they were of course they're, they're always all my parents have always been super supportive of me but they were just curious like they, they were trying to learn from me like how does this all work and I was learning as we were going with it because it was my first record I hadn't I was just getting my I just had an attorney I was working with we were figuring out how I was gonna get credited so it was just I guess their reaction then was like kind of like asking me a bunch of questions and like trying to figure out everything with me. But now like since it's like been, I've been doing it for a while, they kind of just understand it. They trust me to do what I do. And then they're just super supportive. So I think when I first got in, my, my kind of goal was to like, just fl like flood with loops. So one thing I did specifically that worked for me with the loops was I would send out every day. 
for like years straight, like not missing a day. So that's kind of like what got me a lot of my records was just being, just having the work ethic. Cause I don't think I'm like the best sample maker. I think there's plenty of musicians out there that are more talented than me that play instruments. Cause I don't play instruments. I just click in, I'm a click in producer. But the thing that I beat them in is my work ethic and just being consistent and like keep showing up in somebody's inbox. And I've had other drum producers tell me, I keep seeing your name. Like I just, you're the first person I see. So I just click it. So that's what worked for me. Moving forward though, I do think now that I've kind of established myself and like started to build like real relationships in person with certain producers. I do think over time I'll probably like uh, shrink the amount of people I'm working with just to focus more on like specific opportunities. Because back then I was kind of just trying to get my foot in the door. Now I'm kind of like focused more on like specific opportunities with certain producers. But yeah, that's kind of like where I'm at now with the sample game. But I'm also trying to do more beats too, like the drums and stuff. Getting into getting in with more artists indirectly and stuff, just like at this camp right now we're doing. So all of that. I think like I've always been like the type of person like if I want something I will get it like whatever I have to do. But I do think COVID was like the main like switch for me as far as like my mindset with things because pre-COVID, like I was a freshman in high school and I was kind of just like just like an, just like a typical kid at, like at, in high school going to parties doing like just a kid stuff. But once COVID hit and I was kind of just like, I was kind of like mentally in like a, uh, a bad spot. And then it was like COVID. So I was like, just like, damn, I got to get my, my, get my everything together. You know what I mean? So I think COVID is what kind of switched my mindset to be like, to kind of realize what's going on and what I want to do for my life. I feel like before COVID, I was kind of just going with the motion, but then I found my passion. And then once I found the passion for music, everything just shifted. I'm like, boom, I was like set instantly. This is what I want to do for the rest of my life. I got to make, do what I got to do to make this happen so I can live my life doing what I want to do. There's a limit to how much you can, how far you can go just to doing the internet thing. As far as the industry, at least like I've done a lot. I've had a lot of records like um, through the loops on the, on the internet, not really having real relationships with a lot of these producers, but I just send them stuff. A record comes out, but I think like, it's kind of like the only, the risky thing about not building the real relationship, getting out of your comfort zone, going to the studio is you kind of never know when that next song is going to come versus the person that's in the studio with the artist, with the producer in person. Oh, they're like, oh, I did 50 songs. I'm gonna be on this album. Oh, we have this song together. It's more of like a, you can really like take your career to that next level. Also just having a relationship beats anything else. Cause as soon as you meet that person you've been working with, they're gonna like, it's a whole different, like the whole aspect of the relationship changes. You're their guy now. Like it's, oh, it's just, everything changes once you actually take the step of traveling, going to sessions, meeting these artists and producers. So I 100% think people, producers should step out of their comfort zone and like lock in with these producers in person. I can, I definitely think like it's from person to person. There's producers like Kavi, for example, who's killing the loop, like the whole business side of game and he's doing the placement game. He's able to do both and balance both. And then there's producers that are completely in the industry and going crazy, you know what I mean? But then there's also producers who are strictly doing the kits. Like there's like all types of producers. Uh, I think it's best to have balance overall. It's the safest thing to do. Like for me, I'm traveling, I'm meeting, doing sessions, but I still, when I'm home, I'm consistent. I'm sending out packs still. I'm doing the online stuff. That just doesn't go away. Even if I'm, if I'm traveling, if I'm, I'm going to LA and this month, I'm still going to be taking time out of my day when I'm traveling, go on my laptop, send out some packs. It doesn't have to stop. You know, I think you can do both. I think the online game, you can build it to a point where it can kind of run on autopilot. That's why people hire people to do certain things for them. You can't do everything yourself. So I think you can, you can do both, but I, I think it all comes down to what you want to do. I think you can make a lot of money in the industry. You can make a lot of money doing the business, but I feel like you should just do what you want to do because if you're doing the business, but you want, you just love music, but you, you don't have that passion for the business. You're probably not going to end up being super happy in the long term. But the business is definitely safer money because like the industry, you never, like, like we said, you never really know when that next song's coming. You just got to build the relationships to keep, to just have the higher chance of like it happening, get, keep doing the sessions. But I think balance is key, but just do what you, what you're passionate about. I think you can make it work regardless. I do know there's a few people that I've seen on BeatStars that will sell like individual loops for like $1 or a very cheap amount. I mean, me personally, the only thing I've ever done is just like me, me and Kavi, where I'll just send out to people and then go, go for that back end money. I know kits are, are doing good. I think loop kits alone don't sell like they used to. I think now we see a lot more like 
kits with like one shot sounds, loops, like sweets kind of like, it'll be a ton of different stuff. They'll have like a course in the kit. You'll have a course, a FLP, a bunch of loops, one shots, analog like banks for VSTs, all types of stuff. So I think, like I said, I think either works. I think if you're gonna go the give, shooting your loops out for free route, you're gonna end up landing more records because a lot of producers, there's a ton of producers who just go to their email and they just want the loop and then you get the money in the back end. But if you want, like I said, if you're more focused on doing the, the business side of things and having more controlled income where you can know what you're getting, then I could see the kits and the selling your loops as a good route also. I think both can work. I've been doing business with BeatStars, like with my loops and beats for like over two years. Like since I started producing, I've been on BeatStars and then I've been like actually like making sales with the, the loops and everything for probably like two years now straight. And uh, I've talked to Mike, like Mike was the first guy I talked to who reached out to me about the whole publishing thing back like in 2022, I think, like a while ago. He was like the first person I really talked to. It just felt like a super genuine conversation. He wasn't pressuring me, just trying to tell me about the whole thing. And I was just learning about publishing in the first place. So it was kind of just like, I didn't do anything then, but then I came back because I was like, okay, I need to do my pub now. It was like getting to that point where the black box period where you need to start registering your songs. So I was like, you know, like I talked to Mike, let me hit him back up. Cause like he was really the, like the one genuine person and I'm already on BeatStars doing so much stuff with them. So I just kind of went back, hit Mike up and then we did the deal back in October and it's been like a great decision I made. So yeah. I think like I want to continue doing the loop stuff, but I want to start traveling more like these next few years, I'm going to probably travel, move out to LA, really work with like a lot more artists. And then one of my goals in the next two to five years is start to like develop like my own artists and like really break an artist. So that's something I'm really like passionate about doing in the next few years. But just keep doing what I'm doing, get more into like even the drum side of things and then also get into other genres too. I don't wanna just stay in trap. I'm, I'm, I'm interested in doing stuff like pop, country, even Afro. I'm like trying to do it all. So I'm really just inspired to do whatever I want, like all types of genres and stuff also.